So um, this is, I think, by one of his PhD students, Rokshana Naznin, who I've met uh, long. Lung Tak Lim is also in, was in Peter's laboratory in Guelph University in Canada, and Peter, per Peter Perslow. So the um, title is there, Enhancement of Human Iron Uptake from Dietary Supplements by Using Meat Protein. This one? So the problem, of course, is about iron deficiency. And this is the most common and widespread nutritional disorder in the world. As well as affecting a large number of children and women in developing countries, it is the only nutrient deficiency which is also significantly prevalent in industrialised countries. So the numbers are staggering, and in fact, in Peter's paper, he says 3.5 billion people. Over 30% of the world's population are anemic, which means lacking blood iron. So the sources of iron in the human diet are, can be from, say, from a pork chop you would get, which was broiled, 75 grams, you would get 0.7 milligrams of iron. Whereas from spinach, 125 mils, you would get 3.4 milligrams of iron. But of course there is two types of iron. There is heme iron, which you can get from meat, and there is non-heme iron that you get from vegetables, fruit and grains. Now the body can absorb as much as 30% of the iron from heme sources, but only about 5% from non-heme iron. So overall, non-heme iron is the major source of dietary iron. Even though spinach and legumes contain lots of non-heme iron, these foods contain compounds called phytates and oxalates. And these, we know, in hinder the absorption of iron. So in terms of iron supplements, there is um, three common forms. There is ferrous sulfate, ferrous gluconate, and ferrous fumarate. And um, this table shows the um, dose in one tablet. So 324, 300, 100. I'll just talk about the first one, ferrous sulfate. So the elemental iron in um, that tablet is 65 milligrams. But in fact, only 10% of that iron will be absorbed. So a person who is taking iron supplements in the form of tablets will only be able to absorb 10% of that iron. So if they need to take, so if they take 5,000 milligram dose, they're actually only getting still 75 um, milligrams of available iron. And in fact, we know that large doses of iron in the form of tablets can cause unpleasant side effects, including constipation and also nausea. So, um, Peter's lab has previously found that, in, in fact, pork meat um, can be used to increase iron uptake from vegetables, which are rich in this compound called phytates. So in um, one study, pork was added to a basic meal of rice, tomato, pea puree and wheat roll. And this was done in 45 healthy women where they measured the iron absorption. And in the graph, it shows grams of pork added to the meal were 25, 50, or 75 mm, grams. Yeah, grams, sorry. And you can see the in percent increase in iron uptake, and it increases sequentially from 25 to 75 grams of pork. And the beneficial effects of meat on iron uptake are not lost when the pork is cooked at a processing temperature up to 120 degrees Celsius. And this is even though both heme and non-heme iron ratio is affected, can be affected by sodium, calcium and the processing temperature. In terms of the iron transport and regulation in the gut epithelial cell, basically in the um, stomach, um, if there's any free iron, phytates from the vegetables and the grains will actually um, chelate or bind the iron, which actually prevents the iron transporter further down in the gut from transporting it across into the body. 
And that, so phytates bind this iron and stop it from being um, absorbed by the body um, predominantly. Whereas um, if you have proteolysis of meat proteins in the stomach, so proteolysis produces peptides, this is hypothesized to allow the complexing of iron to the peptide at the um, low pH further down, um, and this will promote uptake. So the model is that the the um, so the sorry the um, transporting iron is called DMT1, which is um, divalent metal transporter one. So the aim is to get iron to this DMT1 in the gut epithelial cell so that the body can absorb the iron. So it's very important to have this DMT1 there for iron uptake. So traditionally, um, the model used for uh, studying this, they use something called a CACO2 cell line to study um, iron uptake. In fact, this is a what's called a carcinoma-derived cell line. So Peter didn't want to use the CACO2 cell line. He felt it was much better to use what's called the IEC6 gut epithelial cell line. Much better to use this one. So he used this in his study. Much better for studying nutrient absorption. Um, I'm not quite sure what the next one means, but at confluence, T double -E ER, not as abnormally high as CACO2 cells. Someone might know what it means, but I don't. So the expression of, importantly, the expression of glucose transporters and this DMT1, divalent metal transporter protein, um, these are expressed in these IEC six gut epithelial cells, as shown, if I can press the button, in these pictures here. So in, both in IE6 cells here and also in du duodenal tissue, which is a duodenum, there is the transporter in the duodenum, of course, but also in the IE6 cells. So the objectives were to identify the meat proteins and peptides responsible for enhancing iron uptake from general human diet. They, they wanted to determine the cellular mechanisms involved in the action of these peptides on iron absorption in the human gut. So they were using a cell culture model. And they wanted to find the most efficient conditions coupling meat-derived proteins with conventional iron supplements because they wanted to maximise the iron uptake by gut epithelial cells. So in order to find the most effective muscle protein peptides, they took the, um, let me just check my notes, they took porcine psoas muscle, which is a very tender muscle, and they minced it and added some water to it, and they got the water-soluble protein fraction from that, and then they added some 0.3 molar sodium chloride with some phosphate, homogenised it again, and then they, and the soluble fraction then is the salt soluble proteins. And what was left over then was the insoluble protein. So we have three fractions, water soluble proteins, salt soluble. The salt soluble proteins are of course the myofibrillar proteins as we know them. And the insoluble proteins are the um, stromal or more collagen type of proteins. Each of these fractions then went through in vitro digestion in the presence of um, one of the um, of iron, the iron um, ferrous gluconate, sorry, and they were digested by pepsin at 37 degrees pH two. So this this was then applied to the IEC six cells, and they measured the uptake of iron using this assay called ferrin S method. So in terms of the results, the salt. So what we have here is the iron absorption on the y-axis and on the x-axis is some different treatments. So the first one is control, the second one is just iron, the third one is iron and salt soluble proteins, fourth one is iron and water soluble proteins and the final one is iron with um, the ins insoluble proteins. So basically what you see is that in fact the salt soluble proteins um, promote the uptake of iron. The water-soluble proteins basically have no effect, and in fact the insoluble 
pro um, proteins actually inhibit the uptake of iron. Then um, they also looked at the um, effect of whether phytate was there or not. So again, the y-axis is iron absorption. And now going across um, this graph, we have control, we have iron treatment and good uptake of, reasonably good uptake of iron absorption, so uptake of iron. With phytate, iron and phytate, the iron absorption is reduced. But when you add the salt-soluble proteins, Back into this mixture, you get, um, again, even with a the phytate there, increased uptake of iron. And of course, with iron, and it's just iron and salt-soluble proteins, you get the most um, absorption of the iron in this cell culture. They then electrophoretic, electrophoretically, funny word, separation, they separated the um, peptides. So the first lane shows a molecular weight marker Second lane is the salt-soluble proteins. The third lane shows these proteins after digestion by pepsin. And they actually then separated these, in, separated these into less than 30 kilodaltons or more than 30 kilodaltons using a, some sort of a filter. So what they found, in fact, is that the um, salt, again, the same y-axis as before, but in fact, the salt soluble proteins that are, peptides, sorry, that are less than 30 kilodaltons are really the ones that are promoting this iron uptake in the cell culture model compared to the, um, the high molecular weight peptides. Um, so this is a, this is a graph. <laughs> but I think where this was going was that this is his work since then and they're really trying to focus on um, the detailed separation of the peptides, less than 30 kilodaltons, to try to identify which peptides will have the highest iron uptake, and the aim being to um, develop nutraceuticals. So it shows some um, HPLC is the blue line, and the purple line is mass spectrometry. So they've actually been separating these peptides using mass spectrometry. And it, he says there's over 250 peptides there. And there's a similar number of peptides in the two to four kilodalton range. So the current approach is actually to separate the peptides from the salt soluble fraction bound to ferrous salts after pepsin digestion by ion exchange chromatography. So I'd just like to um, make the conclusions from the work. Basically, they confirmed that the IE6 cell line model was confirmed as a good model to study variation in iron uptake in the gut. That these small peptides from the myofibrillar or salt-soluble fraction of the proteins did increase the bioavailability of iron. And it shows, therefore, the possibility of having peptides and iron together so you can increase the absorption of iron and decrease the current dose that's used so you don't get the unpleasant side effects of nausea and headache. And also that really through mass spectrometry, they've shown that these um, molecular weight peptides, less than 30 kilodaltons, um, there's actually many individual peptides there. So their future work will focus on detailed separation of the peptides in order to identify which peptides have the highest iron uptake and they acknowledge their funding. Thank you. Thank you, Robin.